hello learners welcome to nios studio i'm dr priya and this is my second video on financial statements we have already learned how to make the trading account the profit and loss account and today we are going to learn about the next final account which we have to make and that is the position statement or the balance sheet so Today I will be talking to you about how to prepare and record the entries on the position statement, the balance sheet and also before that I would be talking to you how do we marshal all entries onto our balance sheet. So first and foremost let me define to you what is a balance sheet. Children, learners do not forget it is not an account. It is just a mere statement, a simple statement of what your obligations are and what your resources are. Resources are your assets, your obligations are your payments to your internal and external liabilities. It is a statement which shows the financial position of your organization, of your enterprise on a particular date, usually the last day of your accounting period. It is a statement I am saying which describes your assets and liability at a particular point of time and that is the last day of the accounting period. Remember, it is the last day. It is a balance. It carries all the balances of the real and personal accounts which have not yet been, been transferred onto the trading account or to the profit and loss account. So only the balances whether credit balances or whether debit balances, they are brought from the real and personal accounts onto the balance sheet, which is a statement of your assets and your liabilities. It is prepared as I said, once when we have started and finished preparing our trading account, our profit and loss account. And it is only prepared for your external stakeholders, the government, other companies, the banks, and your companies which you give you your funds to utilize them in your operations. So a balance sheet would look somewhat like this. On the right hand side you will have your assets. On your left hand side you will have your liabilities. You will enter all your assets onto the right hand side one by one and your liabilities onto the left hand side one by one, mentioning the name and the value. And remember, if there is a debit balance in a real account or personal account, that balance comes and gets recorded onto your balance sheet as an asset of the firm. If there's a credit balance in your personal account, that is represented as a liability on your balance sheet. Therefore, now we will start arranging our assets and our liabilities. In other words, we will start ordering the assets and liabilities in some particular order. Now, before we do this step, we must remember at the end of making the balance sheet, the asset side must be equal to your liabilities plus capital that is your left hand side. The balances of both sides must be equal, then only your accounts are accurately made, remember learners. Now remember assets have to be classified as I said in some particular order. Before I speak of those two particular orders, the order of permanency and order of liquidity. Let me tell you in brief, which I know for sure you are aware of is the classification of assets. Assets can be classified into current assets and fixed assets. Fixed assets are of a permanent nature. They increase the production capacity, the business capacity of your firm. Your current assets are those assets which are used in one particular year for your operations for, for bringing, converting them into your receivables, into cash, your revenue. Whereas your liabilities 
are your claims against the assets, against the resources of your business enterprise. Therefore, they are divided into two, internal liabilities and your external liabilities. Your biggest internal liability is the capital which has been contributed by the owners or the promoters of your business enterprise. Because as you must remember, you and your enterprise are two separate identities in the eyes of accounting, in the eyes of an accountant. These your you, your personal accounts and your business accounts are two separate accounts and therefore the owner's capital becomes a liability for the firm, for the business enterprise in which you have contributed, invested that capital. External liabilities are numerous. These are obligations which you owe to your creditors, they can be in the form of bills payable, your loans which are to be paid, which become payable and they are further divided into the non-current liabilities and current liabilities. Your non-current liabilities are those obligations which can be paid beyond one year. But in the case of obligations of a current nature, current liabilities, these obligations have to be met within one year of the date of the balance sheet. Now, we can now begin the next step by finally arriving at this conclusion that liabilities represent what business owes to others and it must always be equal at the end of the making of a balance sheet to equal to what a business unit owns or what resource it, it owns. Now as I said, we will now start entering all the assets and all our liabilities onto a balance sheet but in some particular order. Now keep in mind learners that there are two orders which can be used. First is the liquidity order. The liquidity order clearly states that assets of the highest liquidity have to be written first and assets of the highest liquidity is learner your current asset category group of assets. So first and foremost item here would therefore become cash in hand. It would be followed by the next liquid current asset cash at bank followed subsequently by prepaid expenses, bills receivable, your sun fee debtors, your closing stocks, then your short term investments, your furnitures, fixtures, plant and machinery, land and building and goodwill. Now, if you look on to the right hand side of this, illust of this format illust illustrated to you, you will find that after your cash in hand, cash at bank, I have placed prepaid expenses. What are prepaid expenses? Expenses which have been paid in advance but services have yet to be received become an asset for the business enterprise. Your bills receivables and your country debtors fall into the category of trade receivables. Your debtors are those who have purchased goods and yet have to pay you in this current year accounting period in the year in one within one year of the making of the balance sheet. Closing stock is the stock left at the end of the accounting period. It is also an asset because it comprises of the stock of your yes, manufactured goods, finished goods, your semi-finished goods, investments, your short term investments earn you interest. So they are also an asset for you. Marketable securities would also be one asset, short term asset for you. Then we marshal, we order, we arrange the fixed assets one by one and we find the assets which are the fixed assets which are of a permanent nature which are with us in our business enterprise for a longer time are placed in the last such as land and building. And this category of fixed assets can further be divided into tangible goods, tangible assets and intangible assets. Tangible assets are those that have for the physical nature, those that can be touched. So we have furniture, fixtures, plant machinery, 
London building. But then I have placed also a intangible fixed asset, which is goodwill of your business enterprise. It, it does not have any physical existence, but it is an asset for a business enterprise to do its business in future. So we place it at the end because we are using the liquidity order for arranging the assets onto the right hand side. Now let us look at the left hand side, the liability side. We have placed first the current liabilities, bank overdrafts. When you have used in your business, withdrawn from your account more than what you have, the bank has permitted you, so that becomes a bank overdraft. Your outstanding expenses, expenses which have not been cleared, which your payments which are still due, which, which have to be cleared within this accounting period, become your accounting outstanding expenses. Bills payables, sanitary creditors, all these are your obligations of short term to be paid within one accounting period, but usually one year. Your short term loans, then we have the non current liabilities the long term liabilities. We have reserves, we have capital. Now in your capital, we have to add net profit, if any, which we have earned and which we have shown in our profit and loss account. If we have not earned net profit, then we must have surely learners incurred a net loss and that has to be entered here. And if there has been any withdrawals from your capital in the form of drawings that has to be deducted from the capital that has been initially invested in you, into your business enterprise. And now we can now balance both sides and we will find in the end that our obligations will always be equal to our resources. In other words, what we owe to others is more equal to what we own. Now come, coming to the next marshalling order. In this particular illustration, illustration which I have taken up, you find that the order of placing my assets has reversed. In the beginning, I have placed goodwill learners and in the last, I have placed cash in hand. Now this is permanence in term of they, these assets being there with us in the business enterprise. In your liquidity order, we were think, talking of how fast the different assets could be converted into cash or near cash. So we had placed cash in hand and cash at bank in the beginning and land and building goodwill, which are the least liquid assets in the end. And now we have placed them according to permanence. So here, Goodwill, the non-current uh, non -current assets, which is intangible, is placed in the first, followed by land and building, plant and machinery, furniture, fixtures, goodwill, investments. Then come our current assets, closing stocks, sanitary debtors, bills receivable, prepaid expenses, cash at hand, cash in hand. Now moving on to your liability sites, there's again a reversible reverse order which I have followed. I have brought capital onto this balance sheet format as the first item because it is going to be with the business enterprise for a longer duration, maybe till the business enterprise exists. And to that we have added any net profit which we have shown on our profit and loss account or we have to deduct net loss if any we have shown on the profit and loss account. From that we deduct drawings as learners. We have to take care that whatever we have invested has become the capital. So if there is any drawing that also has to be recorded in the balance sheet to give us a correct estimate of what we own and what we owe whether it is to our internal or external stakeholders. Now next item is reserves, then loans, 
Then we come to move on to our current liabilities, the sun pre creditors, bills payable, outstanding expenses and bank overdraw. And once we have entered and recorded all assets and liabilities in the order of permanence, we can find out the balances of both sides. And again, the liabilities must be equal to all the assets. Now, students, you must remember, if we have already made the trial balance and we are transferring entries from the trial balance, if we are transferring items from the trial balance, then they need to be only appearing in one of the statements, whether it is trading account, the profit and loss account or the balance sheet. But in case of adjustments, which adjustments means which are not which have not appeared on to the trial balance, then we need to be very, very careful. They have to be recorded at two places, at least in the balance sheet and the trading account or the balance sheet and the profit and loss account. The reason is that we, fo we follow the double entry principle. Now, double entry principle, if, it, if the items are coming from the trial balance, that, has, that principle has been fulfilled. But if we are talking of adjustments, we have to be a bit careful. We have to have the double entry completed. So, we have to enter, those adjustments have to be entered in at least two accounts, the balance sheet and the trading account or the balance sheet and the profit and loss account. So, learners, let us take a recap of what we have learned today. So, in this particular video, I have taught you, first I have taught you how to define a balance sheet. If you recall, a balance sheet is a statement of assets and liabilities. It is a position statement. It is a mere statement, not an account. It has two sides, but it is not a key account. It has two sides which represents what the business owes and what the business owns, what are its obligations and what are its resources. And it is prepared on the last day of the year. It is prepared at a point of time. It is not prepared for a particular period, but at a particular point of time, I repeat. And it is usually meant for your external stakeholders. On the balance sheet, we record all the assets and liabilities. We marshal these assets and liabilities in some order. Maybe we may choose the liquidity order or we may choose the permanence order. The liquidity order says that those assets which are most liquid have to be placed first, followed by the other non-current assets in the order of their liquidity. Liquidity here means how fast an asset can be converted to cash or near cash. On the liability side, again, we will place all those current liabilities first, which have to be paid during this particular one year from the making of the balance sheet, followed by the non-current liabilities. But if we choose to make a balance sheet and marshal our assets and liabilities as per the permanence order, then we will place the fixed assets on the asset side, on the right hand side first, followed by the non-current assets. Whereas in the case of liabilities, if we follow the order of permanence, we are placing all our long term liabilities first, followed by all our non, by our current or short term liabilities. But whatever be the order, remember to bring all your balances of your real and personal account onto your balance sheet. No nominal account balance is to be brought onto the balance sheet, remember because we have already entered them in the trading account and the profit and loss account. Once this has been done, we can now total up both these sides and we will always find that assets are equal to liabilities plus capital and capital is nothing but your internal liabilities. The liability which the firm owes to the owners of the business enterprise, to the promoters of the business enterprise and liabilities in ordinary language can be treated as your external liabilities obligations to others. Thank you learners.